and I guess I was um, fairly arrogant about refusing to um, change things or, or, or constantly fighting for um, to try and um, <clears throat> stop the movie from um, mutating into completely out of shape. Um, we uh, we became. Um, yeah, I guess clo um, more and more antagonistic towards each other. And um, one of the problems was at some point, um, Harvey, I believe, started thinking that the character of Bill Hootkins' character, um, Lincoln Weinberg Jr., um, the sleazy voyeur pervert character, was a joke on him, <laughs> uh, which it wasn't, uh -huh. because, in fact, this character was always named Lincoln Weinberg Jr., right back to the earliest drafts of the movie from um, a good 10 years previously. So it was no, no, no reflection on Harvey, but somehow he started to believe that um, this was, a, um, a, was deliberately insulting. Uh -huh. uh, and um, then um, it's also, there's, there's real issues of Harvey. I mean, um, yeah, Harvey's got some Bill Cosby type issues. What? Which um, I believe will um, come to the surface at some point. Oh wow! That's, but that's um, he's such a he's such a powerful man that um, it hasn't got out. And I think um, Ashley Judd said something about it in um, in one of the in one of the larger American periodicals. But it was just mentioned as being a a famous um, Hollywood producer who had previously been profiled in this magazine, but it didn't say um, who exactly it was that she was talking about. Mm. But um, Harvey's always been a bit of a predator, and um, this came out several times in the course of the um, of the production, and eventually climaxed the situation in Cannes, where um, he was trying to get into Stacy's room, and um, Stacy, my actress, um, phoned me and said, "What can I do?" Um, you have can't, Harvey's trying to get in the door and is insisting that. Um, I will never work again unless I do what he says. Wow. So, um, we, Stacey did not open the door to Harvey. Mm -hmm. And um, Stacey pretty much never worked again. Wow. Which, because um, Stacey was great in fucking hardware and um, deserved a part after that. And um, I kind of always held that against Harvey. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's something that's been that's come up a lot on a lot of different um, a lot of different productions, and I suspect that um, at some point the um, the floodgates will open, and you will, we'll hear a lot more about that from different people. But mm -hmm. uh, um, folk being as chicken shit as they are, there's been a um, yeah, Harvey's been allowed to um, pretty much get away with it. Now, when you 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 know if like first hand knowledge of something like that happening, like uh, I would assume that has to like sour your whole experience and opinion of you know working uh working with them or working like in Hollywood movies. Well, only if you've got a if you've got the wrong expectations to begin with. I mean, I I was never um very keen on um on Miramax, to, but I mean they control the, the universe out there. So in terms of independent film distribution. So, um, you know, you, you, you kind of know that you've, you know, you're doing deals with, um, folk who, um, you probably wouldn't necessarily want to take home and introduce to your mum. Like, um, Miramax's marketing genius, which was something that I've heard people repeat over and over again about how they had this genius for independent film marketing, um, pretty much came down to picking up at that stage, um, low budget, um, foreign movies and then marketing them to their lowest common denominator. Like um, in the States, um, The Cook, The Thief, um, the Greenaway movie is sold with a, post a, a, a photographic poster of um, Helen Mirren in lingerie eating ice cream in a suggestive way from a spoon. Um, hardware, they like whomped up the word hard. hard um, hardware, hardcore, um, hard sex, hard violence. Um, and then they put the word Terminator in big letters on the poster. Terminator for the 90s. Um, I, I, I thought their marketing genius was pretty crass. Um, the same went with yeah, Sex, Lies and Videotape, another big hit for them, was uh, sold by a picture of Laura San Giacomo sitting on a mattress with her legs crossed. So I, I kind of had a sense of um, where they were coming from, which was taking um, yeah, foreign art movies, um, Tie Me Up, Tie Me Down is another example, and marketing them as if they were sex movies, which um, made them um, yeah, tremendously successful. This is Richard Stanley, 
writer, filmmaker, anthropologist, whatever. And you're listening to Without Your Head. <laughs> 